A level PE um, exam board is OCR. Uh, the entry requir requirements. First of all, we have um, it's either one of the two. So you've got level seven in biology uh, at GCSE level, or a level seven or above in PE GCSE. If you have not done um, GCSE PE, okay, we are definitely looking for a level seven um, in in biology, okay, because uh, the A level has, and you'll see in a minute. It has got a large component f uh, focusing around um, anatomy and physiology and exercise physiology. Um, you also need a good level uh, in at least one sport um, and a passion for all things sport and health related. Um, it's important that you have a good level in one sport because you're, that's going to be part of the assessment. Uh, you will be assessed in a practical or a um, a coaching role within one particular sport. The structure of the course is, there's four components to it. You're going to have three exams. Uh, the, fir the, the first component is um, physiological factors affecting performance. Um, so that's uh, anatomy and physiology, exercise phys physiology and biomechanics. That is a two hour paper, so that's the biggest paper. Um, you've then got component two, which is psychological factors affecting performance. That's an hour paper. And then you've got uh, component three, which is socio-cultural issues in physical activity and sport, which is again an hour paper. So those are the three papers that you will do at the end of the two years. Um, you also then have a, a, a practical stroke coursework component, which is component four. So that's performance in physical education. Okay? So that's going to be half, half of, of that, so 15% of that is going to be weighted towards your performance in a particular sport, okay? either as a performer or as a coach. Um, you then also have um, the other 15% of that last component is, go, uh, is going to be um, a, uh, a verbal um, answer to a question um, around a performance. So they're going to assess a performance um, and then they're going to have to answer a verbal question on what are the strengths and weaknesses of that performance and relate their answer to the theory work that we've been doing over the two years. So it's a synoptic verbal answer to a question. And that, that's, quite, that's, quite a, that's uh, scripted um, and instead of a written piece, it's an oral piece of work um, and it is 15% uh, of the total. Component one, okay, so we've got uh, physiological factors affecting performance. Uh, it's a 90 mark uh, paper, it's two hours, and it's 30% of the overall A level. Uh, the areas that we're going to cover in component one are, um, so we've got the applied anatomy and physiology, looking at skeletal and muscular systems. Um, so, uh, you know, delving into the, obviously, the bones, the muscles, the joints, and learning a lot uh, of detail about that. So they would have done that already in GCSE, but we're going into it in a lot more detail. Um, cardiovascular and, and respiratory systems, so having a look at how the systems work, um, how blood flows around the body, how we use the, the oxygen, etc. etc. Um, so we'll be looking at respiration, anaerobic, aerobic. Then we've got energy uh, for exercise, so looking at the different energy systems, so the aerobic, uh, the anaerobic, the um, uh, energy systems. Um, and then exercise physiology, so looking at into nutrition, so they're going to learn about a, a balanced diet, they're going to have a look at, uh, delve into the, the effect of, of, of different kinds of diet on the body, um, the effect of different kinds of diet on performance. Um, so they'll be looking at different things like sort of carbo-loading, they'll have a look at ergogenic aids, having a look at things like what do performers take to help as part of their diet, so proteins, um, um, creatine, um, uh, etc. Uh, training methods, we'll be having a look in detail at the, the types of training that sort of elite athletes would use uh, for particular sports um, and having a look at the benefits of those training on the body. So they would have all, all already had the background knowledge of the, the anatomy and physiology. The training methods will go towards, well, they'll link nicely with that. So they'll learn if I do do fart egg training or if I do do uh, lactate threshold training, how is that going to actually be beneficial to me? Why do we do it? And how is it going to change my body? Uh, injury prevention, we're not just looking at injury prevention, we're looking at injuries, d different types of injuries in sport. We're then going to have a look at how you prevent those types of injuries. And then we have a look at the rehabilitation of those injuries. So we'll be having a look at um, a whole bunch of new technologies um, and uh, rehabilitation techniques 
Um, so ice baths, uh, uh, um, oxygen chambers, etc. Uh, we'll then move on to biomechanics, um, and this is probably going to be the toughest um, element for them. It's, uh, if they're good at physics, then fantastic. We're looking at the principles of uh, it's going to be looking at the principles of force and motion. Uh, we're looking at levers, um, uh, specifically related to sport. So how do how do we uh, how do we use our levers in sport? Um, use of technology in sport uh, related to biomechanics, motion, fluid mechanics, and projectile um, motion. Um, so we'll apply these, so we'll look at the principles of these, but apply them as much as possible to a sporting context. So component two, uh, my name is Mr. Oldham and I lead this section of the, the A-level. We're looking at the psychological factors affecting performance, which includes skill acquisition as well as the initial part. So the two sections, skill acquisition comes first, we're looking at skill classification, so how we define skill, where it falls upon a uh, spectrum. Uh, we're looking at types of practice, so how we reinforce the skill, uh, the use of feedback as part of that process, um, and ultimately the theories of learning movement skills that stem from there. Um, so it's a development from our understanding of skill at GCSE PE and how we classify it um, into the actual performance of it. Um, Sports psychology then looks at our individual differences, so it goes in depth into things like personality, uh, aggression, attribution, um, responses to different sets of stimuli, because everyone obviously reacts slightly differently given different circumstances, so it goes into a little bit more depth in that. Uh, it relates quite well to the general psychology um, terminology. Group dynamics, uh, goal setting, confidence, all links into the individual differences, um, but looks at that topic in a little more depth. Uh, and ultimately we're looking at different theories of leadership, different styles of leadership, uh, pros and cons uh, of different types, and stress management, uh, which we use as the, the last investigative topic. Okay, uh, fine, uh, so finally with the theory side of things, we've got component three. Component three, you might not be able to see that so well on the, on the, on the presentation, but it is socio-cultural issues in physical activity and sport. Again, this is a one hour written paper and it is 20% of the overall um, grade. Um, so, just uh, what we're covering uh, social cultural issues is first of all, they'll be having a look at sport and society. Okay, that looks at, uh, at the emergence and evolution of modern sport. So, how, so there's quite a lot of history involved in that. Um, it's, a, it's an eye opener, it's very interesting to find out where you know, the, the concept of sport first came from. So, it's pre industrialization, industrialization, and then from there, and how it went from amateurism to professionalism. Um, we then have uh, global sporting events. So they'll be actually having a look at the impact of global sporting events, why we have them, the importance of those events to those particular uh, countries, and the, a, 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 a wider uh, impact of sport on um, the different countries and the world. Um, we then have a look at contemporary issues uh, that we have in sport, so looking at ethics and deviance in sport. So the sport has now become so professional, uh, what are the particular issues that come out of, um, you know, uh, sport being extremely competitive and so business focused. So ethics and deviance in sport, um, we have a look at things like hooliganism, um, you have a look at cheating, um, so the use of drugs in sport, etc. Commercialization um, and media, so that's having a look at how sport has turned into a business um, and how they are all related to each other, sponsorship, commercialization, media, etc. Um, we've got roots to sporting excellence, so um, they get to learn about how a, uh, a talented young athlete would um, progress through um, their sport up to the elite level. So it has a look at the governing body's um, you know, uh, elite uh, player pathway um, and what is in place, what infrastructure do we have in place for the different sports to ensure um, that we produce the top level athletes. So they'll be having a look at things like Sport England, UK Sport, and seeing how they work with the national governing bodies to, to uh, produce that. Modern technology in sport, we'll be having a look at sort of uh, different things like uh, Hawkeye um, and force plates um, and all of these different um, uh, technologies that are actually helping to advance sport in, in different ways, that, you know, for the viewer, the spectator, and also for the, the performers and the coaches. Finally, we have uh, component four. So component four is going to be taught by um, both myself and Mr. Oldham. 
Um, so this will be the, um, the sort of coursework sort of element and the performance element. So part one is having a look at, like I said earlier, is the performance in one sport in a fully competitive situation. Um, so that will require a bit of filming. Um, then you've got part two uh, is a verbal synoptic, synoptic analysis of performance in a chosen sport. So it's analysis using inf uh, theory knowledge that they've picked up from the course. Okay, so why, uh, so why do AWP? Um, first of all, we've just got a list of jobs in sport here. Um, so they're not just all sports related. Okay, so um, you've got things like, obviously you've got the main sports ones, and then I'll talk you through how, how it's, uh, there are other jobs that you can go on to after doing an AWP. You've got things like a sports coach, um, strength and conditioning coach. Um, it, most uh, elite teams now have a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, there's many, many jobs out there for that particular role itself. Um, sports psychologist, all sports are going uh, pushing psychology. It's, it's become a massive part of the game now, so that's uh, imp uh, um, proving more popular. Um, sports nutrition. These two here, you can obviously also go on to, because we're going so much depth of psychology and the nutrition, you can also go on to just doing nutrition at university or psychology. It doesn't have to be sport related. Sports biomechanics, so you would work in things like institutes of sport um, and you might even work with sort of engineering companies um, to, to work out the biomechanics of certain sort of products that they might have. Um, sports scientists, uh, that, that they, they would generally sort of be working at universities, doing lecturing and research. Uh, sports management, um, again you could then also, because we do look at business in sport, you can actually end up doing something like business management etc, which we'll discuss later. PE teacher obviously, um, sports analyst, uh, which has a look at all the statistics behind games. Um, you've got personal trainer, gym instructors, and you've got a sports physiotherapist. Uh, these are so, uh, boys who have left um, BWS uh, in the last 15 years um, after doing a P. So we've got a list here. Uh, I'll just go through a few because you might not be able to see them. Uh, so you've got uh, Mr. Fishwick here, he went to Queen Mary and he did sports rehab. You've got Tom Heathcote here who uh, went to Bath and he ended up playing rugby. He was play obviously played rugby for Bath. Um, he did economics um, at university, uh, at Bath University. You've got Mr. Harkin here, um, he went to the University of uh, Cardiff, um, he's now an RAF officer. Um, Mr. Crane, who's an army officer, uh, and then we've got other uh, students, uh, so Mr. Bray here actually ended up going on and studying economics. Um, you've got uh, boys who've become accountants, um, and then obviously we have Mr. Domain Griffiths, who went to Durham, became a PE teacher. Mr. Blake is a PE teacher. Mr. Oldham uh, went to Brighton University and actually became a PE teacher. Um, this is one example of a student that we've had, Rob Keith. Um, he went on and studied sport and exercise science after doing his AWP at Birmingham University, a very strong uh, university, one of the Russell Group. Um, he then um, uh, developed further, so he decided to, instead of uh, continuing with the sport, he sort of uh, used um, part of that um, uh, degree to actually um, help him uh, with a, a master's in business management at Durham. Um, he then went on to Hong Kong to play as a professional rugby player and whilst out there he was developing his, um, uh, his experience working in equity research. He then came back to London for himself a job as an equity, um, in equity research. So hopefully that's um, given you a good taste of what, uh, what it's like to do A-level PE. If you would like to know more about sort of the course itself, the ins and outs of everything, you've got the specification here. Thank you very much.